Okay, so the PL190-320. First, we're gonna go over the, um, gonna give you an overview of the robot. We're gonna talk about the changes and improvements we've made to it. We're going to give you a product walkthrough, so walk you through the changes on the robot. And then we're going to step out into the manufacturing area where we have the, uh, I think it's the only MPL190 um, in the States right now. And we're going to walk all over the prototype and you can see it in person. And uh, we're gonna get that running for you. So uh, make sure you stick around for that. All right, so as for an overview, <clears throat> this is really an update to our MPL 160-300. And these are two separate robots, so the 190, or 160 and 300, um, but it looks the same. We just change out the motors and reducers to, lower, to increase the payload and lower the speed to give it that increased payload. Uh, these are our workhorse palletizing robots. So these are used most commonly in end-of-line palletizing, um, and that's moving of boxes, bags, um, layer palletizing, so these things can pick up full layers at once, and also for depalletizing. So if you want to take off full layers at a time, or do uh, as long as the pallet's uniform, you can depalletize it the same way you put them on there. Um, these get used in everything from rock salt to concrete. They are four axis robots, so the T flange always stays parallel to the ground. So you don't have to worry about um, any kind of rotation on the T axis, it always remains parallel. Um, they're also being used for unloading laser machines um, and big, bigger machine tools. So uh, these do find their way into a lot of applications. And they are, they are quite fast because it's only controlling four axis and they're, they're designed for um, constant motion. Uh, for palletizing. All right, as for the changes, um, visually they are very different. So if you look at the robot on the left, that is our PL, or MPL 160, and then the robot on the right is the new PL 190. So there are a lot of changes on here. Uh, the entire robot, every nut and bolt was gone over by our engineering team here in Miamisburg, Ohio. So we actually did the design work here. Um, we sent this back sent all the designs back to Japan where they made the prototypes and shipped it back over. So it was a joint collaboration between our engineering team and the manufacturing team in Japan. So a lot of work went into this robot. Uh, the design was actually determined by heavily by the customers. So we worked very closely with the customers, got their, their voice, their input um, on all the changes that need to be made to the robot. And a laundry list of updates were created um, and a scope was created for the project. Uh, so to, and we ensured that the robot continued to meet demands and got all the desired improvements that the customers needed in there. So among those were mass reduction, um, cycle time decrease, so, uh, making the making their whole robot move faster, uh, increasing the dur durability of the robot. So we made it a, a lot stronger um, and also gave it additional mounting holes for hoses. We increased the T flange diameter, uh, gave it more allowable moment of inertia in the wrist. So 10 kilograms more for the PL190 and 20 kilograms more for the PL120. Um, we updated this to our YRC 1000 platform. The old version was our DX200, and that gave you a much smaller controller. So our DX200 controller is quite large. Uh, it's about the size of a maybe a half size refrigerator. Um, but then our YRC 1000 is maybe a big microwave oven size or a small dorm room refrigerator. So quite a, a size reduction in there. It also reduced the mass overall um, and, and the weight the weight of the robot, and not only the entire robot, but specifically this upper arm. So most of the time, uh, even though every nut and bolt was touched on this robot, most of the time was spent on the upper arm. So the old version was a two-piece design, which was half uh, cast iron, and then the other half was aluminum. So the new version is a one-piece casting of aluminum. And what this did is decrease the, the weight about 30 kilograms compared to the old version. Since the weight is decreased, it allowed us to get uh, a lot more speed out of the robot because there's less rotational mass uh, being moved around by the S-axis. So that gave us a, a big cycle time increase. It, it so, um, 
it also had increased strength. So in the event, um, and this ha only happened a few times, but in the event that the robot crashed, uh, there could develop some weaknesses in that two-piece uh, arm, and uh, it could cause some failure of that arm. So, and it is, it's very rare that it happens, but it did happen a couple times. So the new arm is much stronger, so it uh, makes sure that, that those um, failures don't happen uh, just because of that, that increased strength. So it's, it's much more durable and uh, much more able to cope with just about anything you can throw at it. Other improvements here. So the, uh, in not only that one piece upper arm, we also increase the hollow tool flange diameter to 72 millimeters. So this gives you more room to pass hoses through. Uh, also vacuum lines. We have a lot of customers using big vacuum grippers on there that need a lot of CFM of vacuum. So one of their concerns was, hey, when we have this big vacuum line going to it, there's not enough room for everything else. Can you make this bigger? And we said, yeah, sure. So we increased the, the flange diameter size to 72 millimeters. So you can pass more through it. Uh, also the counterweight is removed. And this is largely due to the more powerful servos we're using. So we're using Sigma 7 servos in here instead of the uh, older uh, Sigma 5s. So much stronger motors. And also the geometry changed the robot. Since uh, the geometry, geometry changed, we're able to remove that counterweight. So that uh, reduced some of the, um, had a large reduction in mass, but it also uh, made the overall footprint a bit smaller. Uh, another notable change is the horn height. So the wrist horn height reduction. So this robot will get used uh, very frequently in more outdoor but still covered areas. And one of the concerns was the ceiling had to be of a, a minimum height to allow the robot to operate because that horn was so high. So one of the pieces of feedback we got was, hey, can you shorten that horn so we can put it into shorter buildings? And we said, yeah, sure. So we decreased it to 107 millimeters, and that gave a bit more room in those tighter, um, tighter spaces so it can operate in areas with lower headroom. And it also uh, reduced the uh, chances of an impact with the ceiling in those environments. So as far as the other side goes, um, the, all the links were redesigned. Um, just due to the geometry of the robot, basically everything changed on there. Uh, we talked about those upgraded uh, motors. We also redesigned the x-axis, so now it's much stronger um, and able to cope with a higher duty cycle. Uh, the upper arm on there now has more mounting holes in it. So there were some in the old version. Now we have a lot more in there. Uh, again, due to feedback from our customers, they said, hey, it'd be great if we had more mounting holes so we could route our vacuum lines and wires up and over the robot so they stay out of harm's way. So we did that. And here's the spec comparison between the two robots. So you can see they're both four axes. We didn't change any of that. We increased the payload of the old version of the MPL 160 to 190 kilograms. It does have ever so slightly more reach due to that revised geometry. So we have three whole millimeters of, uh, of increased reach, which doesn't make that much of a difference, but it does uh, did add a little bit there. Uh, repeatability stays the same as does range of motion. Uh, the maximum speed of the X S axis is the same on these uh, spec wise, but as far as duty cycle goes, it is faster due to that increased acceleration. Uh, the L axis is faster as is the U and the T axis, uh, and our controller changed as well to the new YRC 1000. As far as the 320 version of this goes, and like I said, the robots look the same. It's just a change of the motors and reducers to lower the speed and give it more payload capacity for those that need more payload. Um, so it looks like there's a slight mistake on here, uh, but the payload of the new MPL or the new PL320 is 320 kilograms. The MPL300 was 300 kilograms. So we got a 20 kilogram increase on that. Um, it looks identical to the other, or to the uh, PO190. So it's that same three millimeter increase in reach. So ever so slight amount of reach. 
And then our speeds did change uh, quite a bit from the MPL 300 version. So much faster on the S, the L, the U, and the T. And you'll notice that the T-axis on both of these is significantly increased, the T-axis speed. And that's because when you're palletizing, there's a lot of rotation that comes from that T-axis. And uh, so we, we increase that so you can get the overall cycle time uh, down on the robot so we can we can increase the speed that way. We found that the t-axis was one of the bottlenecks so that was increased quite a bit and that also helped to give us that increased moment of inertia. All right so now we are going to walk out onto the uh, manufacturing floor and we're going to check out the MPL 190 in action. Uh, we have a couple of jobs loaded up so first we'll go all around the robot and then we will uh, get it running for you hey everybody thanks for joining i am on location here in miamisburg with the only pl190 robot in the country so this is uh the prototype version and we're, we've been doing some type testing here in miamisburg so the robot was entirely gone over by our staff here to redesign it make it faster make it better uh, take input from our customers and make a much better robot. So uh, yeah, I went over the specs earlier, so now we're going to see those in person. So the biggest change on the PL190 robot is this one-piece aluminum upper arm. So this is one, a one-piece casting, which makes it a lot stronger and also lighter than the previous two-piece version. The two-piece version was half ductile iron and uh, half aluminum. So. Uh, Let's us increase the speed quite a bit because we're not throwing as, ma as much mass around. Also makes it more durable. Uh, so in the event that the robot does crash, you shouldn't have anything to worry about with this upper arm. So some other, uh, yeah, in, er, other improvements are gonna be the horn height up here. This is 107 millimeters shorter than the previous version, which lets you put it into areas with a, so maybe you have a, a shorter building you need to put this in you can now use one of these arms where maybe you couldn't before. The T-flange, uh, there's a hollow hole inside here, and this has been increased, the size of it's been increased to allow you to fit more airlines than vacuum hoses. This upper arm link uh, now has mounting holes in it. It's also been redesigned, but it has mounting holes on it. So you can route your wires, cables, vacuum lines up over the robot so they stay out of the way. So other improvements are going to be these new Sigma 7 servos, and they were previously Sigma 5 servos. That's what allows us to get part of the speed increase uh, and also get the payload increase. We've also removed the counterweight from the back here. This is just a spring balancer. There's no counterweight involved. So that lets us reduce a lot of mass and uh, some reduce the overall footprint of the robot. So like I said, this is a PL190, the PL320 looks identical to it. The only changes are going to be to the motors and the reducers to lower the speed and increase the payload. So uh, these are the improvements to the robot here. We do have a gripper on this with a bag inside. And this is a, I forget how much that weighs, but it's a weight. And we're going to be throwing this around, let you see the robot in action and view it at speed. So let's go check that out. Okay, so we're going to run a basic palletizing job so you can get an idea of the speed of the PL190 robot. So you can see it going through some air movements for palletizing a bag. So this is running about 25 bags per minute currently. You can tell we have these cable ties inside and that's to keep our bag of uh, salt there from sliding around too much. And that's a 40 pound bag that we're moving around. Alright, so hopefully that gives you a good idea of what the PL190 is capable of, and this will be released uh, very shortly uh, for you to be able to buy.